Welcome back to Pete's Workshop. So there's a problem with the Golf GTI. Uh, the temperature gauge goes up to 90 fine, which is normal, right in the middle of the gauge. And then all of a sudden it shoots up to full scale. Um, also, we get a warning saying that there's a cooling system uh, problem and it beeps as well. And um, we need to work out what's going on with it. Okay, so last night I did actually clear the faults and I thought I'd try and replicate them today. What's really interesting is we're now getting no temperature at all. There's been no alarms yet, which I'm quite surprised at. There's no check engine light yet. And just with a generic Elm 327 OBD converter using Torque Pro, you can see that the coolant is flashing so that's actually where it was last night so it's flashing though as if to say there's no signal um, everything else is definitely working so I'll rev it up to show you that this is actually live so it is actually connected it is actually working but right now there is no temperature gauge at all um, I do have the heater on in the car though, and it's actually producing warm air. So the, the, the engine is up to temperature as well. Um, so, and you can see it's 16 and a half degrees outside. So it's not like it's uh, freezing cold at the moment. So yeah, we definitely got some sort of issue there. Um, what I'll do now is plug in OBD 11 and we'll have a look and see what that says. So here we go, P0117, engine coolant temperature sensor number one, circuit low. Again, I still can't believe no errors, no alarms on the dash, no problem at all. So what was happening was the temperature was all the way up to 130. As it would get up around 130, we'd get a, an alarm in here, a coolant alarm. I can't remember exactly what it said. Uh, and it would beep as well. Uh, and pretty sure something flashes down here also. And then it looked, if you revved it up a little bit, it would drop back a tiny little bit to maybe 120 or something like that. Um, but then, all of a sudden, occasionally, it would drop back to 90 and it would be fine. And then within two seconds, it could go all the way back up to 130 again. There we go. Nice to see that it's actually decided to alarm. So yeah, glad that I captured that. Let's just see what live data we can get out of this as well. Just wanna see uh, what that says at the moment. Go and see what we can find here for coolant. Engine cooling. Mm, let's go temperatures. Oil temperature 89, ambient temperature 16.5, air intake, engine outlet temperature. 138 description so this is actually saying the temperature is very high at the moment it's interesting that the gauge isn't followed at all it's like it's detected that fault and it's saying well I'm not going to drive it at that that's too high but it does uh, say that it, that's what it is in here so I go to that mapping one radiator outlet temperature. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So the coolant temperature there, G62, actually looks pretty good. And radiator outlet temperature looks fine as well. So interesting, where is the G62 coolant sensor? And where is the, the other? coolant temperature sensor.
So strangely enough, it is actually a bit difficult to get definitive answers on where that sensor is and the best way to go about replacing it. But what I have found is basically the sensor is down underneath the inlet manifold. Definitely don't want to take the inlet manifold off. It looks like we can take, move all of these pipes, um, take off the throttle body and the boost pipe, probably take off the inlet stuff as well, just to get a bit more room to get my hands in there. And then there's a brace that holds the inlet manifold up against or from the block. So the brace goes from the manifold down to the block. So once I remove all of those, we should be able to get down to the temperature sensor down in through here. So that's the plan uh, to be able to do that. These are actually coolant pipes. So first thing I'm gonna do is drain the coolant. Okay, here I'm in the process of taking the boost pipe off. So I've loosened off seven millimeter, uh, loosened this off a bit and pushed it off there. There is a, down here, uh, that clamps onto the engine block down there, just with a T27. And then there's another one lower down as well, which you access from underneath. So now I need to get the uh, get the pipe off the intercooler outlet down the bottom there. That's what I'm about to do. Okay, I got that boost pipe out of the way. It gives heaps more room. It's got to be super careful. You don't even touch this radiator because uh, you will mark it and damage it. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm going to take this hose here off so that I can swing these hoses all the way out of the way because they're going to be in the way. So I've just removed this hose clamp, pulled it back. Uh, now I've just got to try and wiggle off this uh, hose off the plastic union. Being careful, obviously, not to break the plastic. Okay, so that allowed me to swing these hoses all the way up. So now, oh, now we are getting closer. So these two wires down here, that yellow and brown, I believe that is the coolant sensor. So we're getting closer. Just gonna continue removing that throttle body and that'll give me a little bit more access. Okay, now that gives me heaps more room. We can actually see that sensor down there and see it quite nicely through here as well. There we go. So now I'm gonna take this brace off that's right in the front of the camera here. I uh, can't really, yeah, I can't show you without pulling the loader, but basically that 13 mil bolt, I'm gonna remove that and that lower bolt down there which is a triple square, eight or 10 mil by the looks of it. I think we'll get that out of the way and then I'll see if I can get to the sensor. Remove that bracket out of the way, which is awesome. Now I've just got to work out how that sensor is actually held in. I can't actually see it right now, whether it's a clip or a bolt, because I have seen a couple of different versions. Uh, try and get that to focus. So it looks like maybe that torques underneath needs to be removed, but it's actually difficult to see. I'm going to try and get some better footage of that somehow. Well, the good news is I got the sensor out and it looks 100% compatible with the new one, which is great. 
The bad news is I broke the clip that holds it inside the housing. So basically this housing, this clip goes on like this. And there's no, well, you should be able to remove that without breaking it, but it broke. So I'm gonna have to try and get a new clip and let's hope I can buy that without having to buy the whole new, the whole sensor. I'm not sure how it comes from Volkswagen. Ridiculous design though, that a temperature sensor that is so close to the block is held in with a plastic clip. Doesn't seem real great to me. And just very carefully removed the O-ring with a pick, being careful not to scratch the housing. The other thing I wanted to mention was that the connector was actually had water in it as well so that had definitely uh been leaking internally um, and that's probably what was causing the erratic movement of the gauge i would say it's been a few days I had to wait for the post to arrive we had a covert lockdown so things were all a bit delayed but i did get the clip finally that holds the coolant temperature sensor in so um, it's only five bucks, but I was happy that I could buy one on its own. That was great. Just came in a little bag like this. It does have a top ran part number on it. We'll take a closer look at that. Remember that the sensor was leaking a little bit. So if you look at those connect those contacts in the connector, you can see they're a little bit wet and that's probably coolant. That's not so good. So I'm going to clean that out and put a little bit of dielectric grease on those. And here is the actual fault with the sensor. So you can see where it's split a little bit and fluid's been able to leak inside. You can see here after it's been out for a while, the fluid actually coming out of it again. So this is the new sensor and the new clip all mounted in. Okay, I'm in the process now of dropping these hoses back down. Uh, this is approximately where it needs to go. So obviously this one goes here, this one goes to here, but I gotta make sure I push this short little hose back on here. So I'm being really careful not to damage any of the plastic fittings. This is actually part of the water pump. So that would be a nightmare trying uh, if I broke that. And obviously here, if I broke this one, would be a problem as well. So I'm just carefully trying to get this into the right place to be able to refit this hose. And uh, hopefully we don't break anything. Okay, we can see I've got that pretty close here. It's basically starting. So now the hoses are actually still nice and supple, which is good. So I can just gently uh, push that back on now. Still hoping we don't break anything. Went on really nicely. So now I can uh, proceed to put the screw underneath. There's one under here and one in the end of the manifold here. So I'll go and pop those in before I put that hose clamp on. Happy with that. On the auxiliary water pump down there, haven't done the clamps yet. I'll do those from below, but uh, they're both slipped on nicely from up above. The other thing I've got to remember is that, so that's the radiator outlet temperature sensor. I pulled that out to drain the coolant. So I've cleaned up the rubber O-ring, put it all back together. 
and I've pushed that uh, green clip back in as well. So that's in, all in and where it needs to be. So I think what I'll do next is fit up the throttle body. So I've given that just a bit of a clean. It's been sitting there ready to go. Uh, I'll pop that back on the inlet manifold. Okay, so I've just put the boost pipe back on. Haven't tightened this up yet, but just make sure that's all in the right place nicely. And the lower pipe as well, that's hooked in, but I just need to put the clamps on those. Of course, don't forget about the sensor here. And then in the end as well, I'm gonna make sure I pop that, the uh, throttle body plug back on it as well. But uh, I think we're doing all right. So the boost pipe has two plastic brackets on it with those two screws in it as well. So you can see that's the top one. And then there's another one down below, which I'll get uh, from lower down. So we'll get those done. Two screws, they are actually captive. Um, this one fall, keeps falling out though. Uh, the other one holds in there nicely, but that's what the screws look like. Here I'm installing the fan assembly from underneath of the car. Okay, so I've just put the fan assembly back in. Um, four, only four screws that hold those in, one on each corner. And then of course the connector down the bottom is plugged in and the clip's done back up. I've done both of the clamp, both of the uh, bolts that hold the boost pipe and I've done the seven millimeter hose clamp on the bottom, seven millimeter hose clamp on the top. I think that's about it. We should be ready for fluids, I think. Well, it's always a good sign when the bonnet's down. So um, filled up the fluids and uh, started up, warmed it up, took it for a test drive. Thermostat's working fine, um, staying at temperature, everything's working fine. So I'm glad that it was just the temperature sensor and now it is fixed. We are good to go.